Hey everyone, welcome to this video in which we'll see how we can implement server authentication using React Native. And what do I mean by that? I mean that you need to implement, let's say, some sort of login or some sort of registration in your React Native application. And how do you handle the cookies, the session management, the backend? How do you integrate that stuff? So we'll take a look into that. So starting off with the simple model that is you, you just have your mobile application with you and you just have the server. So in this case, the options we have are, um, you can either go with custom token based authentication, you can go with JWT, right? Or you can go with basic authentication. Now starting off with custom token based authentication, what this basically means is that here, you pass some sort of unique identifier to the user right once you do that you use that unique identifier to relate that particular user on the back end and you know you sort of try to get the um, session associated with that particular user now this would involve some sort of changes on your back end and you know some sort of different logic as well in your back end if you have a um, you know already implemented stuff for web front now Coming to JWT, JWT basically just means that you're passing in all the data you need for the user to be visible as plain text to the user or maybe a little bit encrypted or whatever it is, but usually it's plain text with a signature payload, which determines that that data is not tampered with. So what you do is basically you pass in the data directly to the user but you just add a hash as well which the user can compute at its own end and verify that json of the user has not been messed around with server can do the same thing right so for jwt it's convenient if you have very small amounts of data associated with a particular user and you don't need to hit the database every time um, it is not really convenient if you have very large chunks of data for a, for a particular user because jwt essentially just you know transfers the whole json object to and fro on every http request so you need to take care of that now here's this website is basically a simple example of how you can try uh, how jwt would actually work so you can try out um, jwt.io this is the website if you want to play around a little bit with jwt right you get all sort of headers payload and you know verification signature stuff like that so moving on to the next one which is basic auth it's nothing it's pretty similar to custom or custom tokens approach it's just that you pass in an authorization header to the server to the remote server which would have some sort of token which the server would um, then have the option to accept or reject so i'm not going in a lot into this one because it's as the name says it's very basic Okay, consider the architecture, which is, I guess, a little bit more common. You have desktop, server, and mobile architecture. What I mean by that is you have a website, you have a mobile application, and you have a backend server. Now, what you want to do with React Native is basically you want to share as much code as possible um, on the server. You don't want to implement um, the logic again and again. But the problem is the desktop clients use cookies by default. So browsers are configured to send cookies every single time um, with a particular which a cookie which is associated with a particular page every single time on every request. Mobile phones are not configured to do that. So essentially, that is what we can do with React Native. We can configure React Native to send our cookie payload every time. Now with React Native, um, the problem was that you could not really directly modify the cookie. The last time I checked it, um, there were some inconsistencies when I was directly trying to add the cookie to the HTTP request. So what, what we need to do is we need to write a custom fetch wrapper for React Native. So um, the code will look something like this. So what we have in here is I bring in some async storage so that I can store my authentication token, which is essentially the cookie, which my server sent right so first of all check if i have the authentication token right if i do have it then i'll proceed if not then you know you just have to perform an unauthenticated request 
now I get some sort of body which is whatever the body the um, you know the code is passing me and the headers and finally I create a config object and right here you can see that I have x access token set to my particular token right and then I finally perform the fetch request to the remote server now the important thing here is this x access token right and I'm also setting my cookie to be null so I'm not transferring my cookie to my backend instead I'm transferring a header called x access token now once you do have a wrapper for this what you'll see is react when, when you use this wrapper that is when you use this fetch function instead of the inbuilt one um, you'll see that you perform the request with this particular header but you need a middleware as well on the back end to intercept all the requests check if they have an x-axis token if they do then you need to replace it with the cookie so how do we do that well you see that for part two we need to write a middleware for the server now middleware for the server would look something like this now here we could see that auth is our middleware for all the routes right and what we see is that we first of all get the access token if this header does not exist that pretty much means that either we are not authenticated or maybe the user is just you know a normal browser user so we just return next otherwise what we do is we manually inject the cookie into the user session so I say connect.sid which is like the default node cookie standard s then equal to sign which is URL encoded and then the value right so once we do that what we have in place is basically we have this particular um, session with us and then we perform a next request again now of course you can perform some sort of val validation of this value before you just you know inject it directly into cookie you can actually you know unsign this cookie with your cookie secret to check if it's a valid cookie or not if not then maybe just take appropriate action you know log to servers that a breach attempt has been detected or something like that but for now for the code purpose I just you know uh, just injected it directly so once you do that you just perform next and make sure this middleware is before express uh, parses the session right uh, now I'm using express for this example so express before express passes the session you have to use this middleware which would inject the cookie um, just like a regular response to the express and then your further express code would just take care of this as a regular session right so you would have a request dot session restored and you would have normal database access and database calls and all that stuff so yeah that's pretty much it how you would um, perform this and how do you get that token in the first place on react react native end that is basically when you log in your server sends the cookie not only as the cookie as well as one header so you grab that header and store it on the device inside async storage or whatever you want to do right so yeah that's pretty much it how you're going to implement a thing like this so if you like this don't forget to subscribe thank you for watching and obviously if you have any questions leave a comment below and make sure you like the video. I'll see you then in the next one.